In today's video, I'm going to show you how to track financial stats for crypto projects. All of these stats are going to be completely verifiable on public blockchains, and they'll include things like fees, revenue, and the number of users. The point of all of this is to determine the fundamentals for different projects and see how strong they are when you strip away the hype. The example we'll use in today's video is Trader Joe because this project has been popular recently. However, as a reminder, this isn't financial advice that you do or do not invest in this project. This is just an example for the purposes of education. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick. Now, let's get into the video. To start real briefly, what exactly is Trader Joe? And I'm just going to go through this for a second because the point of this video is to look at the financials, not to do a protocol overview. However, basically it's a decentralized exchange. It's on multiple networks, but the largest networks that it's on are Arbitrum and Avalanche. And you can trade on it, you can provide liquidity, you can stake. Uh, they also have an NFT platform. And basically where it excels in a nutshell is they have something called their liquidity book, which allows you to provide concentrated liquidity. And basically it makes liquidity on Trader Joe more efficient. So with less money deposited, you can get better rates, which is good for liquidity providers because they get more fees to share amongst a smaller pool and good for traders because they have lower slippage and better rates when trading. So that's what Trader Joe does on in a nutshell. But the reason why I'm covering it today is because it's been doing really well recently, right? You can zoom in here on the price chart and just see that over the past couple months, it has just done uh, phenomenally, especially over the past month. And so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the financials and see, do the financials match this price increase? And furthermore, could we have used financials to predict the price increase ahead of time? All right, so let's do that. The website we're going to use today is DeFi Llama, great website for on-chain data, as well as other sorts of fundamental analysis. And one thing I also want to point out that that's really cool about doing this in crypto is it actually feels like a step forward from the current way that financial reporting is done with stocks, because all of these metrics we're going to show you today, with one or two exceptions, but almost all of them, they're all completely verifiable on a blockchain, meaning that you aren't trusting any sort of report, you actually can verify it yourself. And furthermore, it means that they're updated in real time. So for example, if I search for Trader Joe here, you can see there's a few different sub protocols, but we're just going to select the main one. Then if we check total value locked, which means deposits, that's actually going to be updated in close to real time, maybe every few minutes, every hour, or so like that. And you could actually get it updated in completely real time if you were to track the information yourself. So that you're no longer waiting for quarterly reports, you're not waiting for any sort of monthly update, you actually can find out day by day how the financials of the protocol are doing. Um, and yeah, so so that's what we're going to track here. Uh, the website is again, DeFi Llama, you can search protocols, and then we selected Trader Joe. And uh, real quick, just to look at the, the metrics we're going to look at, we'll look at total value locked, which is deposits. In the case of a DEX, that's the liquidity. We're going to look at volume. So volume, since it's an exchange, is the amount of money that's being traded on it. We'll look at fees. Those are the fees being collected. We'll look at revenue, which is similar, but slightly different than fees. And we'll talk about what that difference is. Then we'll look at active users that can be less reliable than something like fees or volume because it doesn't take into account how valuable each user is. And then finally, we'll look at the treasury. And so what that is, that's actually the amount on chain in this protocol's treasury. Again, really cool because you can find out in real time how it's doing. All right, so let's go through each of these metrics one by one. And to start, we have total value locked, also known as TVL. And like I said, that's basically for a DEX, that's the amount of liquidity that's deposited. For lending protocols, that would be the amount of funds lent out. For liquid staking protocols, that would be the amount staked. And uh, TVL gets a lot of heat a lot of times, even though it's the most widely used metric in DeFi. And some of that heat, I think, is justified, some of it's unjustified. The problem a lot of people have with it is for one thing, if you compare two totally different types of protocols, for example, if you compared Trader Joe, a decentralized exchange, to Lido, a liquid staking platform, the TVL is kind of a meaningless comparison because those deposits are being used in totally different ways. So for example, if we said Lido has $18 billion deposited, 
Trader Joe has $117 million deposited. That Trader Joe TVL is going to generate a lot more fees per unit of TVL than the liquid staking TVL is. Uh, and that's because it's being more actively used by traders versus passively just being tokens that are staked. So that's the first reason why it's wrong. Uh, and the solution to that <clears throat> is obvious, right? The solution is that you only compare similar protocols. You don't try to compare a DEX and a liquid staking protocol. And even better yet, you just compare one protocol to itself to see whether, whether it's growing. Uh, and then the second criticism many people have is that TVL is very dependent on price. So for example, if Trader Joe TVL is largely AVAX because the main chain that it's on is on Avalanche, then you might question, well, if the price of AVAX goes up, how much of the TVL increase is based on that? And for a DEX like Trader Joe that has many different tokens in it, actually parsing that out can be difficult. For example, you can press this toggle on here to see the TVL in terms of AVAX. However, that doesn't really give us the full picture because uh, the TVL is not down, price of AVAX is up. However, we can see, although it's one of the major coins, they have many other tokens in here as well. So it's not really giving us an accurate picture to, <laughs> to look at this. Now that we understand what TVL is, one other useful thing about these charts is you can actually select to include token price in here. So let's see whether TVL had any, any predictive power for token price. And we can see here, it seems to be pretty close ratio. And I actually don't think this is because Trader Joe has so much Joe tokens on here. If you look, it's actually not even one of their largest auto pools. Um, I, I, think, I think it's just that uh, it's gonna be highly correlated with the market. And so many people are so attuned to TVL right now that a few years ago, you could look at TVL and it would have a lot of predictive power. But by now, so many people are trading based on it. There's so many bots that are trading based on it that it has a lot less predictive power than it once did. Uh, and so still useful to assess the financials, especially if you're looking at long term. You know, if, if these didn't go in lockstep, it might be useful, uh, especially, for example, if the token price went up and TVL wasn't moving. But, but I would say maybe it doesn't have as much predictive power anymore. Next metric we're going to look at is going to be volume. And one thing I really want to separate here is you see two metrics up here. We have token volume and we have volume. Those are completely different. Token volume is the volume of Trader Joe's token Joe. So that's the volume that's actually being traded on exchanges. Volume is the volume that's being traded on Trader Joe as an exchange itself. What I mean by that is if you if you buy and sell AVEX on Trader Joe, you buy and sell ETH on Trader Joe, that is volume. Token volume, again, is buying and selling the Joe token on any DEX. So I'm just reiterating this because I've seen so many people mess this up, including people who our analysts at very high profile firms mess this up. Volume is what you're looking for if you're looking for how much volume is actually taking place on an exchange. So this is getting to be a little bit more of an interesting picture, right? You can kind of see the relationship between TVL and volume here. As volume goes up, the rates go up, so TVL would tend to go up as well. Uh, but if you look recently, for example, we see that the volume has really been up a lot the past few days. and more than that, it's actually been up really since the middle of October. And if we look at it on a weekly basis, uh, you can see that trend a bit more clearly, right? Where it had a peak in June, it dipped, and then it started to rise again a few weeks ago. We'll go back to daily. Uh, and let's let's take a look at whether token price and volume, whether there's any visible relationship. Now, I will say, obviously, if you really wanted to be more scientific about this, you would actually do a statistical analysis. Uh, and, and I do some of that in my newsletter, by the way. But for this video, we're just gonna we're gonna eyeball it and see see whether it could help. So here, I would say actually, you know, this is a little more interesting than TVL because we had this initial spike in volume on October twenty fourth, and maybe that's not enough on its own if you're observing to convince you to go in. However, I would say that perhaps seeing something that was anomalous like that would be a good sign that you wanted to start paying closer attention. And the whole market was up, but notice then it had a second spike on November 1st. And if we look at the Joe price over here on this one, we can see it had a little spike then, but 
the big action, you know, the main event came two weeks later. So you had two weeks from noticing these higher highs in volume on October 24th and November 1st, a week apart. And then you had a bigger jump on November 9th. And even when that bigger jump happened on November 9th, that still wasn't really the main event. And then you had a full week before the main event where this price started to take off. And part of that is other catalysts related to AVAX. However, however, the fact of the matter is that volume would have been a decent metric to tip you off that it was worth looking at, Joe. So that's volume. Let's we'll get rid of TVL. We'll keep token price for now. Let's look at fees now. And you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of token price. I'm going to do fees and revenue. Isn't this dashboard so useful? So fees and revenue. What's the difference? You see pink is revenue. Maybe it's tough to see. If I go weekly, maybe it'll be easier. Marginal, but we can highlight it. So uh, you see, for example, on November 12th, fees were 2.57 million. Oh, this is weekly. So the weekly fees starting November this week, 2.57 million revenue, 614,000. What's the difference? Fees are from the perspective of the user. Revenue is from the perspective of the protocol or token holders. So for example, if you are trading on Trader Joe, you're buying AVAX, you're selling AVAX, you are paying a slight fee. That's the fees that are going towards the protocol. However, a good chunk of those fees are going towards liquidity providers. So the revenue is the portion of the fee that goes towards either the treasury of the protocol or it goes towards people who hold the token, which in this case is Joe. So when we see fees are higher than revenue, that's because the fee is everything the user paying is paying, and then the revenue just goes back to the protocol or token holders. And an analogy from the Web2 world might be if you sell something on eBay and you get most of the money, then eBay, eBay takes a cut of that. eBay doesn't count the money that you're getting in their revenue, right? That's transaction volume in their in their marketplace. They just count the the actual cut that they take. So that's kind of kind of the difference between fees and revenue. So let's look at the trend on this. I'm gonna go back to daily now and I'll take out revenue. Let's look at fees compared to token price. All right, so it is, you know it's interesting how much of a correlation there is, right? Um, very similar to volume, as you'd expect, since fees is kind of a function of volume. Um, however, one thing I'll say is, you know, absent, absent what we talked about with predictive power, this sort of steady uptrend in fees is really nice looking. Of course, we look for continuation on it, but that is uh, really strong looking where it's not just a sudden spike for one day. I mean, compare this to if we go look at this one day in May, where for some reason they went from $40,000 in fees to 1.96 million, that's clearly some sort of anomaly, right? Whereas when you see the fees steadily increasing over the span of a month, over the span of two months, that actually tells you something much more fundamental about the protocol or the protocol's position in the market. Let's look at revenue. We can see here, all right, so looking very strong, uh, one thing one would want to investigate is why did this suddenly jump in a way that we didn't really see with fees. And uh, we'd have to investigate that further to understand why. Next metric we're going to look at is active users. So active users is users in this case basically means number of unique addresses. And we can see here this has been, let's get rid of token price so we can sort of view it better. We can see it's been up, right? It was running about 3,000 a day, now it's running 5,000 a day. This can be somewhat misleading sometimes because some of the users might be bots, some of them might be the same person with multiple accounts, different wallets. Uh, you know, I have multiple wallets, some for my main holdings, some for things that are riskier. So you gotta be careful with the users, uh, especially for example, in any protocol that has any sort of potential airdrop because you're gonna get people just trying to farm the airdrop. I would say it can have some signal, but uh, it's going to be less significant than something like volume or fees that has has money involved. That being said, I do know that some founders use this as their main KPI, so it's not worth discarding entirely. 
uh, final metric we're going to look at is going to be treasury. So this is really cool. This is actually the on-chain treasury of the protocol, how much they have. And you can see that currently Trader Joe has about $55 million in their treasury. And we can click over here into the treasury tab and we can look at it and, and discover the breakdown. And the main issue with this is that we see this treasury, at least insofar as it's tracked publicly on chain, is almost all their native Joe token. So that's $55 million of Joe token. Of course, that makes any correlation with price irrelevant. It can be useful to understand the firepower they might have in the future for ecosystem funds and things like that. But basically, it doesn't tell us that very much about the protocol. To give a little more color to what treasuries can look like, if we click on the treasury tab over here on the left, then we can see all of the largest treasuries in crypto. And we see some of them, for example, like the Mantle treasury has, they have $1.4 billion of their own tokens. However, they also have $200 million of stable coins, $520 million of BTC and ETH, and then $5.6 million of others. Likewise, Ethereum Foundation is going to have tons of BTC and ETH, and so on and so forth. Currently, this is sorted by total excluding their own tokens. If we just look at total largest treasuries, we see that it's not necessarily a huge problem to have your own tokens in the treasury because you have projects like Arbitrum, Uniswap, Optimism, ENS that have massive amounts of their own tokens in the treasury. However, if you're looking for the long-term health of the protocol, generally speaking, it's a good thing if they have some stable coins and majors in their treasury. If you want to learn more about crypto fundamental analysis and on-chain metrics, I have a weekly newsletter I send out where I actually share what I consider to be the most important metrics from that week. You can see my example from this week here. Subscribe at dynamodefi.substack.com. If you want more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.